Hey, what's up, everybody? Give me one second here. Okay. Oh, I guess I should have it. Uh... What's up? I should probably have it on the other way. I've never done this before. Let me see how this looks real quick. Is this good? I don't have it on real time. There's a little bit of a delay. Hey, let me see. Give me one second. I might have to do this like I usually do my uh, streams. Okay. Because there's a little bit of a delay. This is okay, right? I can probably move this up a tiny bit. Hey, hey! All right, so what's going on? I hope you're all having a good time and everything. I know, the command center, right? So technically, the chair that I sit on is what the, mon uh, what the screen is on, what the monitor is on. Um, where I play is actually right behind where this camera is. And right here is usually where the curtain is. So I'm, I'm further back. Hey, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you guys all the steps on how to make your own uh, Blanca Chan doll. And then I'm going to upload it into two sections on YouTube. And it's actually very, very, very easy. Easy to do. Um, I, when I make all my costumes or anything else, I work on the floor. So this is sort of like a behind the scenes kind of thing too as to how I do all my cosplays and everything else. But um, first thing you do is, you know, you have to wear comfortable clothes because a lot of times you're gonna end up getting um, hot glue everywhere, you know, and it's gonna get a little dirty. So you wear something that's sort of messy. And then um, you have all of your materials, okay? So basically, the idea of this here is this is generally a large, um, yeah, floor. Am I heading to final round? I'm trying to. Um, I got my pre-registration all in, but right now I'm just trying to work on um, finding a ticket from Pittsburgh to Atlanta because they're, uh, they're a little up there. But I'm, I'm trying to see what I can do with that. Okay, so... Blanca, this version of him is basically just a pillow. That's all he is. He's a giant rectangular pillow with arms and legs attached. There's nothing easier than sewing big rectangular pillows. And you can see from behind, he's basically just a rectangle. So all that's added is just the hair is hot glued on and the eyes and the arms and legs. So it's not that difficult if you guys are worried about this being difficult to do. So what we are going to do is I'm going to go through all of the materials that you would have to get. I'm going to be making two uh, while we're all doing this. So uh, the first thing you're going to need is about two feet of um, felt material for his actual body. You're going to need a, uh, another soft felt like material for his eyes. You're going to have to get a, um, a package of large buttons for inside his eyes. And these are some extra buttons that I have left over from the last one, but uh, the colors didn't match anymore. So I had to purchase, you know, I had to purchase more. Um, some red um, yarn I did for the inside of his eyes to make them stand out a little bit better. I had purchased a, um, this isn't really a material, this is more I guess just an accessory. Uh, this is sort of like a plastic band that's uh, shiny that I used for his little um, I don't want to call them cuffs. I guess at some point they were chains or handcuffs on his ankles. 
you're going to need a couple of pieces of orange felt, the kind that you would only get for about 50 cents a piece. Um, I got, you know, quite a few of these because I'm going to be making two of them while we're here. You're going to need beige material of felt for the piping on his pants. So I have two of these. I'm trying, I'm trying to read your guys' writing too because it's so tiny. Um, you're going to need a, um, a slice of felt that is white for his teeth and this is actually a little bit more sturdy than this soft one for his eyes. The soft one for his eyes you have to sort of fold and make rounded. This one is more rigid so it stands up better and if you fold it in half that's how it looks sort of thick and not see-through-ish for his mouth. And then I had also purchased um, an orange that was more, uh, I don't know how to explain this, it's more um, industrial, so this isn't as soft, so I was going to add some of this for his hair also. And this material here is sort of like a brown that you could use as his khakis for his pants. Um, this is also a bit rougher. It's sort of like a canvas feeling material, which is good too, because as you cut it and as it wears, it frays like his actual pants. Now, when I first started to make this, I originally was going to put belt loops on his pants and a little brown button and make it seem like he actually had, you know, pants on like with little pockets and things like that but the way that they had it in the game they don't have all that extra stuff so I figured you know what it's easier this way I'm just gonna do the same you can also take the um, the orange for the hair on his head and just add the little hairs on his um, arms and legs so I guess we're gonna get started with this right like I said, I'm going to be making two. If there's anyone that would like to join in to make one of these with me, um, you, you know, we can do it now, or I will be putting this up in pieces on YouTube, and you guys can see it on there. Um, starting out on this, I hand sewed his frame with just using regular thread and a needle. Then when I was done hand sewing it, which took a long time, um, I made it more sturdy by hot gluing the edges to make sure that the thread stayed. Because I knew this was going to be going in and out of um, uh, suitcases and people were going to be holding them. So. What you're going to need is those materials, thread, a good needle, um, a good pair of shears, and I also brought out my sewing machine so that this doesn't take all night long. Hopefully it'll go a little quicker with my sewing machine, um, but you know what, if you want to hand sew it, that's fine. I hand sewed this guy 100% and he turned out pretty damn good. So. Yeah, thread needle and shears, that's it. So, let's get started. Um, whenever I make things, I actually don't go by measurements. I usually go by how it fits on me or how I think the material would lay. Uh, I find that way to go much better, but I wanna try to give you guys measurements as we go because I know some people are gonna be watching this and trying to put, put them together. So the first thing we're going to do is try to make a Blanca body and real, like his body is just rectangular. That's all it is. It's just a pillow. So I'm going to take my two feet of material and I'm going to, um, or this is about, yeah, this is about two feet. Um, I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to fold it in half 
And the key is, is that when you're going to cut this, you want to make it so that on the sides, you're going to have roughly an inch to two inches on the sides because you're going to be sewing there. You're going to be super gluing it and you're going to be turning this inside out and you want it to be strong. So you don't want the sides to be real kind of narrow. So I'm going to make this, let's measure Blanca just to see what he is because I'm curious. He's about a foot. He's about a foot wide by a foot long, really. So well, he should be longer than that. We'll say 13. We'll say 14. We'll say a foot by, he should be more than that even. We'll say a foot by 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, um, I'm going to make him 15 wide my scissors by oh shit. 15 wide by 18 long it sounds the best to me and then we're going to start trimming this and getting them going that's about right okay so where are my scissors And um, here's a uh, tip for you guys. If there's anybody that's interested in getting into doing sewing or anything like that, it's always best to get the best shears that you can because it's worth the investment. Um, they... Uh, might cost about 50 bucks, but if they start to go dull, you can always get them resharpened. Okay, so, I'll take this and trim them this way. Hmm. So here's our first Blanca, and then our second one is right here, and what I'm going to do is kind of have to improvise a little bit, huh? Let's see here. That's not going to work for him, huh? Hmm. I may have made this one too big. I might have to make the second block a little smaller. Well, let's just work with one for now. I might have to make the second one separately. Well, I don't know. Let me see what I can do with this. I can make a second one a little, uh, real quick, right? Let's see. 12 by... I actually thought I got more material than this, but I think I can, I think I can work with them. Okay, so this is going to be arm and leg material. 
This is going to be Blanca number two. It's going to be baby Blanca, I guess. All right, so here is your Blanca body. Now, here's the trick, right? Sorry, I'm sitting up too high. The camera's not catching me. Okay, so the trick is for anything that you're making, that you're making a stuffed animal for, the side that you want on the outside, the side that you think is the best, like the fuzziest or the shiniest or whatever, you want to put that side on the inside of whatever you're sewing. Okay, so let's see here. This side's all right, but this is the fuzzy side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put that on the inside of this. Okay. And you see how the bottom of this looks kind of like, I don't know, it looks sort of folded up and everything. That's because it's the end of like the roll that they had. Well, that's going to be okay because the, um, the pants are going to go there anyway, so you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sewing machine and I'm going to sew the edges of this. I'm going to sew here in an inch and then I'm going to start sewing around the bottom and I'm going to sew the other side. Okay. And then when I'm done sewing it on the sewing machine, I'm going to um, take my hot glue gun and I'm going to run the hot glue gun on the inside of the seam to make sure that it's, you know, if it rips, it doesn't unravel. All right. So I'm going to move this stuff. So here's my sewing machine. I went on eBay about a year ago and had gotten a sewing machine and um, it's a Singer that was um, refurbished and it's an industrial sewing machine. I don't need something that's real fancy. I just need something that's strong and has a real good motor because you don't want something like to burn out, you know? So, let's see here. The... I haven't used this in a little while. To be honest, I mostly hand sew everything, um, but I had bought a bunch of pants for work and I took it to the seamstress and they wanted me to pay all this money to get all my pants hemmed. And when I added it all up, I was like, my God, I could buy my own sewing machine on eBay for that much money. So that's what I did, you know? It's easier. Plus, um, I had worked in the um, prosthetics field for some years before, you know, getting laid off. And um, we had to make industrial, like, corsets and um, leather, um, leather holders to help keep prosthetic legs on. So we worked on giant, humongous industrial leather sewing machines. So it just makes things a little bit easier. So hopefully this will, uh, this will work. Let's see. I can get this thing going here. So right now, I'm sticking the needle in the machine, or I'm sorry, I'm sticking the, um, the fabric in the machine. It's going over an inch into, basically, more into Blanca's body, okay? And um, I'm not going to go too fast because I don't want it to get jammed because this material is, uh, you know, thick. And I'm just going to go real slow. Make sure this is working right. I think it is. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so here we go. And, you know, to be honest, this foot pedal is supposed to be on the floor. I'm just pressing it down with my knee because I like to work on the floor, so I'm kind of odd like that. All right, here we go. Make sure this is all lined up properly. Now, 
Now, because this is awkward material and this can get jammed, I'm not going that fast. But it's faster than um, hand sewing. Now when you get to the end of one side, when you get to the end of here, you're going to uh, lift the uh, little plate that holds the material and the needle down and you're going to shift the material and put the plate back down again so you can sew down this side, okay? Unless you want to make a rounded corner, but I just think it's easier. I'm just going to shift it. And just do it like this. I'm going to put this down and then just get started back up again. I'm not going to go that fast. I'm going to go slow. Now here's the key. Right now, I have sewn from here to here, and his legs are going to be coming out right here, right? And I'm going, and I have sewn from here to here. I'm going to leave this spot open because that's where the stuffing's going to. Well, actually, I could probably put the stuffing more up towards his. No, I, I'm going to leave that part open. I'm going to leave this area here open to put the stuffing in and then I'm going to continue to sew up this edge here. Okay, so we're going to lift up this paddle and I'm going to um, give myself a little bit of uh, string. And I'm just going to shift this whole thing. Whoop, I have to lift the needle up. Okay, I'm just going to shift this whole thing over. And I'm going to start sewing on this opposite side. So we're going to start sewing again. We have our little pocket where we're going to put our hand in to put in the rest of the um, stuffing. Okay. So we're going to lower the paddle and we're going to lower the needle and we're going to get started. Now, I have basically sewn a U into this piece of fabric. Remember, this part right here is folded. You don't have to sew that. Who cares about that? That's the easy part, right? I sewed a U, and now we're at the end. So if your machine has a reverse setting on it, this is where you want to hit the reverse setting slowly go back and then come forward again and that's going to lock your thread into space so it doesn't pull through do you know what i mean 
Um, it might rip, but at least it's not going to unravel. You, you see what I'm saying? If you're hand sewing, this is when you're going to take uh, your needle out and you're going to make a knot at the very end. Okay, so let's do that real quick. I'm going to hold down on the reverse button and just make it go backwards a little bit and then just make it go forwards. Okay, I'm going to lift up the paddle and lift up the needle and then I'm just going to take this out and I'm going to uh, trim it. I'm gonna take a piece of tape too and make sure I take my uh, my uh, uh, thread into place. Okay, so this is what we have. And right here is where I left that little gap to put the um, the felt or the felt the um, stuffing in. Okay. Remember the good fabrics on the inside. This is literally just a pillow. If there's anything that you want to make a pillow out of, like a t-shirt or whatever, this is how you do it. It's really easy. So, now that that's done, I'm actually going to um, sew the other one real quick, just to get it, uh, just to get it ready. Let me see here, real fast. It's not going to take very long. I'll do it kind of quick. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that I had bought more material than this, but I guess, oops, I guess I didn't measure it right, huh? I should probably leave that spot open for the uh Okay, so the little one's done. All right, I'm going to take that down. I'm going to freaking open up my four loco because I have a feeling I'm going to need it later in case this thing doesn't work out. <laughs> carbonated these things are. If they weren't so fizzy, I'd be happier. Okay, so here is Big Blanca. Okay, we're going to have two Big Blancas and a Baby Blanca, basically. <laughs> um, now, the next thing we're going to do 
is his arms and legs. We are going to be looking at this piece of material right here. I tried to make his arms and legs long because if you look how Blanca is, he's actually a really tall, big guy. It's just that he's hunched over. I think Blanca's actual height is supposed to be six foot two. That's taller than Vega. So, I just thought also for, um, you know, this body, if you had little short arms, it just wouldn't look good, right? So, we'll just take a general measurement of what these arms are. Where's my measurement tape? Shit, I'm losing stuff already. Mm. Nope. Oh, I did something with it, right? There it is. Okay. So, I have his arms at... About 12 inches. His arms are roughly 13 inches, and his legs are slightly longer. I would say 13 by 15. So let's take this. Ugh. And we're going to, and, and this is the same with the arms and legs as it is with um, the body. You want your best material on the inside because you're going to be flipping it inside out later. So. Let's do a circumference here. Eight. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. How long is this? How long is this material? Actually, this could just work. This could just work. I'm really lucky with how I cut this material because I'm real close to the danger zone with this. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take this material here. It is 10 inches by 19 and a half. We're going to take this and literally cut it straight in half like this. And then we are going to be working with all four quadrants as their own limbs. And then we're just going to customize it as we go. And let's see here for little Blanca, then, then, um, let me see. Uh, actually I might need to, well, 19. We could do that. Let's do that. It's a little easier, huh? Maybe Blanca. Let's do that one more time. Just to make sure. To be honest, a lot of this kind of stuff is just eyeballing. You can just eyeball everything and kind of guess and see how you would want them to be. Do you want them more gangly? Do you want them more like kind of big and puffy, you know? Okay, so to try to keep him looking uniform, 
I kept his arms and legs at exactly the same width, okay? And his arms are actually only slightly shorter than his legs. So, ah, I'm having a tough time cutting this. Okay, so here are Blanca's arms, and here are his legs. All right, so what I'm going to do is, oh, I think I mismeasured this. Shoot. I had thought of something else last minute and then didn't do it right. Well, we'll see. So this is very close, huh? Hmm. Maybe I'll use this for the little one. Hmm. I may have made this too, uh, his legs too small. Hmm. Well, we'll just have to see as we go. All right. I thought I could sort of trim them in a certain way so that I had more for the other one, but it didn't really work out like that. So, I should have left this and trimmed half of it for each one. Well, we'll see if we can work with this. Fine, I guess. All right, so what we're going to do is put the best material on the inside and we're going to sew the outside. And we're going to sew this edge to here, like this. We're going to fold it in half. Hmm. should have left more material for that. I might have to take from this. Let me see. I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> Let's see. I should have left more. This actually is perfect. I might have to use this. Actually, you know what? Well, this is that's not enough. All right. Mm. It's too small. Goodness. This is the biggest one. All right. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm still trying to figure out ways how I can get two of these guys out of this material, so. All right. So this is the good side of the material. We're gonna sew on this one. We're gonna take this and fold it in half. And it's gonna look like this. And we're gonna sew the edge here, okay? So, here we go, this. Oops.
okay, now here's the key. <clears throat> the closer that you get towards the end of the foot or the hand, okay, you're actually going to kind of round it a tiny little bit because you want his hands to look like they're like this, okay? You don't want it to look like it's a square. So I'm actually going to try to curve it while I'm sewing it, and I'm just going to go kind of slow. Well, that's not necessarily slow, but it, it kind of got stuck. <laughs> When you're at the end of that edge, you can go back and forth again, hitting the reverse button. Okay. I'm going to lift this up and see what we have. Now, if you can see here, it looks like you have a little rounded edge. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to do the other one. Let's see, this is the first leg, which is pretty good. Second leg. All right, good part on the inside. That is this. We're going to put this on the outside. And we are going to get started sewing this. Started. It's getting stuck in there. Let's see. Mm. I don't know what's really going on right now. Oh, let's see. What's up? Yeah, it's because it is stuck. Oh, Lord. Yeah, sometimes with the softer material, it gets pulled into the machine. So you just have to be careful about that. It sort of gets like jammed, jammed up a little bit. So. All right, got it. All right, let's try it again now that we're all cleared up. might be. I might have to sew the rest of this by hand here. Shit, really? doing that. Let me try to fix something real quick. Yeah, 
Man, I wonder why it's doing that. I don't have a screwdriver to get in there to try to dig it out. I'm gonna have to hand sew this thing. Ah! All right. Man, now we're stuck to hand sewing. This is gonna take forever. Shit. All right, let's shut this thing off. Damn. Okay, so. We're gonna get your thread out, cut it. Get a good needle. And put it through. You guys are getting a little bit of everything today. I'm going to show you how to, all the tips and tricks on how to do stuff. So if you have to sew anything hand sewn, what you have to do is um, cut enough thread so that when you double back, you can put a knot at the end that you cut it at with your opposite piece of thread. It should look like a necklace, okay? I'm going to knot these two pieces right here. That way it's stronger, okay? So, of course it's hard to see, but yeah, so when I was at Winter Brawl, I had my, uh, my arcade stick and I've never, you know, I've never had a problem with it. And uh, I got it all, you know, got the joystick put in, which it's a dislocating joystick. So I put that together and I put my, um, I put my uh, cord in the back of it because it's a, you know, dislocating cord. And I put my arcade stick down behind me because I went to go reach for something and I turned around and I stepped on it. And I stepped on it right where it connects to the back of the stick and I snapped off the whole connector unit. I was so angry and I was lucky that my friend Emily uh, and her boyfriend had their arcade stick that they weren't using at the time. They didn't have any uh, competition at that at that moment, anything to play. So they let me um, use theirs. Oh my gosh, it was just horrible. I was so mad. Alright, so same thing as the um, sewing machine. We're just going to sew the opposite uh, edge of this. And hope that it doesn't tangle up. This is gonna take forever guys, I'm sorry. No my sewing machine was gonna get jammed up like that. I'm gonna have to fix it later and actually take it apart. No. So what's been up with you guys lately? Anything new? Anything new? Anything exciting? Oh yeah, so um, so at the end of the story basically I was looking for uh, any of the modders you know to try to fix it <clears throat> but they didn't they weren't there you know they didn't make it in so 
I, um, I saw Alex Smith and I was like, hey, oh my God, can you please, you know, please take this, my arcade stick, you know, back with you and try to, try to fix it. So right now it's with him and he's, uh, and he's working on it. Um, you know, I was pretty, pretty upset because this is the first time I've ever, actually, it's the first time I've ever broken the stick, period. Uh, my Mad Cat stick, you know, it never broke. And the cord was permanently attached, you know. And this one, I don't know why I just took a step backwards and, and that was it. Crazy, huh? Hmm. There we go. But Winter Brawl was a nice tournament. I mean, I had a good time. I got to get some um, commentary in, and um, I got to uh, commentate in some Tekken, which um, which is good. I'd never done that before. I was commentating with my friend Tim, who's um, you know he's very very knowledgeable about Tekken. I used to play a lot of Tekken Tag Two, and um, you know and. I play a little bit of uh, Tekken 7, but I figure, you know, I can get I can get more involved in that, especially when I was trying to play Dragon Ball Z. I was thinking to myself that whole time, I was like, man, you know, I know how to, like, wave dash in, in Tekken Tag 2, and I used to know how to do electric, so I can't do them in Tekken 7. And I was like, my God, you know, I'm trying to learn this new game, and here I have, I have all this stuff in, in Tekken that I knew how to do, and... And, I, and honestly, I should be doing it, you know? So, I'm like, that's it. I'm putting time into, uh, more time into Tekken again. Yeah, it's just the only thing that sort of freaks me out about Tekken is, is that playing it, it's just really, really, really advanced. It seems almost as if you play Tekken and, and nothing else sometimes, you know? It's like each character has at least... 120, 160 moves. Oh my gosh, you know. But when I played uh, Tag 2, I used Eddie and um, Kazuya. And I would, I would open with Kazuya and try to do a lot of damage. And then I would do a bound combo and switch out Eddie, and I, or switch in Eddie, and then I would let uh, Kazuya um, heal. And then, uh, while, when he was, you know, about 75%, you know, mostly there, and then I'd switch him back in and try to finish off, you know, because he had all the power. And you didn't have to worry about being in rage or anything to try to uh, switch into double form. You could just do it, you know, so it was pretty convenient. Um, I really liked that game a lot, and, you know, the story's really good. They have the great cinematics in there, and the stories were really, really cute. Some of them were really funny. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so you can see here, I sewed that little half moon, and um, on this end, Sorry, I'm going to be putting a knot there to make sure that this does not come unraveled, okay? So, mm. Ooh, I don't want that tight. Alright, so I'm going to trim that, and actually, I'm going to change the channel because E-Leak's on. Let's see where it is. So if you guys have access to TBS, E-Leak is on now, and they're doing a, um, a Tekken 7 E-Leak 
and um, I'm trying to think. I know Cody's on there, who is a um, a Kazia player. So I can't wait to see how everybody does. All right, so we got the two legs done. Let's see if I can get the arms going too. Which honestly, I could probably just do. Go do these. Is this the same width? Try to look at the sewing machine again, just to see if I can fix it. What's going on with this thing? It's all stuck. what give me one second I'm gonna grab some needle nose pliers and I'm gonna be right back because I think I can fix this right now actually can do here real quick. go okay we're getting somewhere I think we're almost there so I think I got it all cleaned out okay God, right? Okay. I'm hoping it's going to hold up. 
and not get jammed up again. One can only hope, wish, and pray, right? So let's just hope it works. These are the best tools in the world, needle nose pliers, fabulous stuff. You can use it to fix anything. All right, well, let's hope that this, uh, this works. So we are gonna try to sew the, um, This is the leg, this is the leg. We're gonna to try to do arms, which I put over here. Okay, let's see here. Now you want to make sure that you're going to keep all of your scraps because we need to make his little thumbs too. So we are just going to hope that this is going to work, huh? And just slowly start to go. Oh, oh, oh. Sounding like it's a mess again, and it is. How in the hell is this happening? Sorry guys, I don't know what's going on with this sewing machine. It's being a mess. It's like releasing multiple pieces of uh, thread at once instead of two. Let me try to look at it one more time just to see. What's happening with this? Oh. Nothing else. Nothing else. one last time let's see if not we're gonna have to hand sew this thing it's gonna take a while but actually you know what let me see if I can get it started doing it this way first going on with this thing. There it is again. I'm still stuck. keeps doing the same thing over and over and over it like keeps pulling for some reason it keeps releasing like 10 10 strings but it's supposed to only release one one from the top and one from the bottom and I have no clue where the rest of these strings are coming from they're like jammed up inside the machine somehow and I can't seem to pull them out Uh, 
Ugh, I'm gonna have to take this whole thing apart now. Okay, well, looks like we're gonna have to hand sew this whole thing now. Mm. Mm, that sucks. Where'd my little loop go? Right here. Let's put that back for now, huh? Okay. All right, so we're going to take um, your regular string on the needle, knot it again on the end, and Make sure the knot's big enough so that it's not going to pull through the fleece. Okay? And then we're just going to get started with trying to sew this thing. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. This fabric's a little difficult to go through because it's thicker. So you have to sort of work with it a little bit. Hmm, this isn't the, uh, the Tech and Ely. Road to Boston Major, New Legends. I don't know about this. Let's look at that again. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh well. So, the weather here, it was nice for a couple of days, and then it really stormed, and there was some flooding. Um, there was some flooding, and then it's turned into sort of like a freezing rain, and it started to snow a bit. Oh, my needle. Get stuck. Yeah, it was, uh, the weather was really interesting. And people, you know, their roads were getting flooded out and all kinds of crazy stuff going on with that. It's not unusual for it to snow here in the winter time. Headshots. It sounds like this might be uh, uh, Black Ops or something like that. Black Ops. I used to play a lot of Halo when I was in college. Um, I used to play in the fraternity houses and we had little tournaments. Um, and I was on different teams and things like that. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was good times. Okay, so. Let's take a look here and see. That's about right. I just want a little bit more. Okay, so I ran out of thread. 
So I'm just going to actually put a little um, knot in on the end here. And then I'm going to add some more thread in. Let's see. But I'm really uh, happy at Winter Brawl. My friend Alan, who goes to school here, um, he was the Colleen player that beat Knuckle Do. And, uh, you know, he's the nicest guy. And I'm really happy for him. He, he always works really hard, and he's very, uh, very smart. You know, he's going to school for uh, computer engineering um, in Pittsburgh. He's a real nice guy. I'm happy to see, I'm happy to see him do well, you know? So he was super excited. Yeah, he was super excited. And, and on Saturday night, we were all sort of sitting around and everything, and he's really nice, but he's kind of quiet. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, you got to tell him, tell everybody what you're going to school for and what you're doing and stuff, because he's still kind of new to a lot of people, you know. But I'm happy to see that he, he did so well, and maybe, you know, this will help him, you know, sort of open up a little bit more, and then people will talk to him more and everything. And he was a Colleen player. He also plays a very good Ryu. Yeah, very nice guy. I think he's a sophomore this year at um, Carnegie Mellon. So he's he's really working hard. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. But I just remember in Halo, it was just so amazing because you could uh, get in the little airplane you know, and fly that thing around, and that was just the coolest thing in the world. You can get in that little, that little airplane and fly, and you can get in those little trucks and stuff, and play capture the flag, and it was just good times. School is weird. There is no senior or freshman here, they only ask how long you've been here. Um, that's because uh, you're going to school in Florida, right? Sometimes in specialty schools it's sort of weird like that because people are, uh, it depends on their work schedules. I mean, if they have to work full time and, you know, do other stuff, you know. So when I'm sewing Blanca's arms, I don't round them like I did his feet because you figure his hands are going to be curled in like fists. So I just sort of make it flat across the top. I'll show you guys as soon as I'm done uh, sewing this here. I'm really mad my sewing machine just pooped on me. Pooped out. Got all jammed up, which I don't know why. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm going to have to look into that. What's up with that? Do or die. Okay, so here is his arm. It's flat on the top, and then we're going to sew down the side. We're not going to sew the bottom because that is where the um, the stuffing's all going to go in. 
Okay, so we have one more, which is this one here. Put her a little knot in here. Actually, I should just use a new piece of string because this is not long enough. Where's my thread? Where's my thread? There it is. The patience. Oh my God, you have no clue. I, I sort of want to take all this and chuck it through the window because <laughs> if my if my sewing machine would have been working properly, we'd be on the pants by now. But it's not. So when I made this one, I made it all by hand. I didn't use the sewing machine at all. But I just feel kind of bad that you guys have to sit through this now because you know. This is the longest part, is actually needling everything, so... But we're getting there. We are getting there, so... Alright. We are slowly getting there. And why I sit on the floor like a crab, I don't know. I've done that like all my life. I think it had to do with um, when I was little. I always sat on the floor to play with my Legos. And then consequently, with almost anything now that I have to do that's creative, I have to sit on the floor and sort of have everything kind of spread out around me. I'm pushed further up in this room usually I'm a little bit further back and I have everything really all spread out so yeah so I'm a little a little more cramped up here but it's okay all right so we're getting through getting there. I've had a lot of people ask me to make them cosplay costumes and things like that. You know, the problem is, is when I make those costumes um, for myself, a lot of times, like I said, I don't go by measurements. I, I go by, I make portions of it and then I put it on. And I sort of tweak it as I go. So there's no real set way of how I do anything. Um, I'm always sort of adjusting and changing things as I go. I made a um, an El Fuerte costume. And uh, when I did that and the top I was trying to lay on um, all of this uh, fringe, okay? And I wanted the fringe to lay a certain way so that when you had it on, it kinda pushed out so that when you moved, it would, it would kinda shake and everything, you know? 
So when I had it, and I would put it on, and then I was, I'd put it on and I'd take it off, and then when I'd take it off and I'd lay it down and try to work on it, it didn't look right. So I'd have to take it apart and do it again, and take it apart and do it again. So I was like, you know what, screw this. I'm just going to leave the top on, and I'm just going to freaking uh, hot glue it while it's on. Now, the other times that I've done stuff like that, it actually worked out okay. Like that jury costume, that design on the top, I actually had it on and did that. So it would, you know, sort of look better, you know, blend better. But, uh... I learned my lesson with that El Fuerte costume because a drop of uh, hot glue came out of the gun and burned the hell out of me. <laughs> oh man, I was so mad when that happened. Oh my god, I was so mad. And it hurt because it's like a third degree burn and when you try to wipe it away, it's like a it's like, a, imagine a drop of water, okay? And when you try to wipe it away, it just smears, and then it just goes everywhere. And you're like, oh, God, it hurt. It hurt pretty bad. I had, like, a little scar there for a while and was not happy. Yeah. Yeah, scab and everything else. Okay, we're getting there with this arm. We are almost there. That second block is gonna have to wait because this one's taking, this one's taking all the time right now. Little block is gonna have to wait. How long? Uh, where's my other arm? It's right here. If you guys are making it to final round, that is a big Tekken hot spot. And, um, you know, I heard them on here talking about Brazil. Well, there are some extremely good Tekken players from Colombia that come up to uh, final round. And, um, you know, and it's always great to see those guys. They're very, very nice and amazingly good. <laughs> All right, okay, so we reached the top of the arm, and I'm just going to knot this. And we are going to put some stuffing in. Actually, no. You know what we're going to do? We have to, um, I'm going to knot this first just to make sure I get it done before I forget. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take, because um, remember, this is the out, uh, sorry, this is the inside of the arm, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to glue inside of here, okay? inside of all of this to help make sure that it doesn't split and um, the thread comes out. So on the legs, I'm going to put it all in here and in here, okay? And that doesn't take very long, it's pretty quick. So this whole time, I've had my hot glue gun on And what I'm going to do is just lay this out and start gluing away. I 
did this with the other one too. You know, and as you go along, you just sort of pause and press your seam down to make sure that there's good contact between everything. Yep. Make sure you don't put your hand in the glue, too. Okay. All right, so this one's done. It doesn't take very long. We'll do this little arm here. This one is ready. So what are you guys thinking about uh, CEO being in um, Daytona? It's uh, further south than um, Orlando. And uh, the airport is much smaller, so it's a little bit more, I think, expensive to, uh, to fly there than it would be to Orlando itself. But, um, I mean, it's okay, I guess. But what is nice is that it's so incredibly close to the beach, which is awesome. I'm really happy about that. So that's going to be a really good time. Okay. I'm so mad my sewing machine broke. This is the one I did on the sewing machine. All right. So now we're just going to wait and let that cool a little bit. And we are going to take the one that we uh, hot glued first, which should be the coolest. We're just going to take that. We're going to turn it inside out so that the nice part is now on the outside. You kind of want to do that gently too, just in case you don't want to break the seam. And see, it's a little, uh, it's a little Blanca foot there. So, I am going to take some stuffing. Not a lot, just a little. And I'm going to start putting it in because we have to make his... his foot Look at this one in there too Let's see how that goes and actually I might hot glue uh, the edges of this too real quick I forgot to Hot glue the edge of his body.
let that cool for a minute and adhere. And while that's happening, we're going to do the rest. We're going to do the rest of his feet. I'm going to grab some stuffing. Oh, turn this inside out. Duh. Let me see something real quick. This one didn't connect. Let that cool real quick. Okay. Do this one. These ones might be more difficult because they're smaller. Let's see here. Guess we could do that, huh? Then I'm gonna flip around his other little leg or arm, duh. Road to the Boston Major. Hmm. So we have our little feet, we have our little arms, we're going to take our stuffing, not a lot, just a little, and we're going to start putting it in the feet. And the key is when we have enough in there to sort of make a foot, we're going to take it and we're going to curl it and make it look like there's an actual foot and an ankle there, okay? Because it's all one piece of material. It's not multiple pieces of material, like separate pieces all glued together. So instead of it being just like this, we're gonna make it look like it's like that. Because we're gonna put stuffing up in here too. See? 
So, let's see real quick. Make sure this looks good. That's pretty good. So mad my sewing machine got jammed up. What the heck? I don't need it now, but I mean, it would have been helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to grab this needle and thread. And because there's only stuffing up in this top portion where the foot is, I'm going to take this top dorsal part of the foot okay and i'm going to sew it up on his shin to look like this and that's what's going to keep the leg looking like the foot is bent up do you know what i mean so i'm going to take the needle and i'm just going to start sewing right here to this to right up here to lift it to lift it up like that when I get through with um, sewing it like that, I'm actually going to um, hot glue it that way also, just to sort of reinforce everything. So I'm going to bend it up like this, and I'm just going to start to sew up in here. And then you just sort of just sew a line. And if it looks a little sloppy, that's okay, because you're going to put those bracelet cuff harnesses on over the, um, the sewed line anyways, okay? So don't worry if it looks messy or not. It's okay. That's okay. All right, so when you're done with that, you're just going to sew a knot in, and then you're going to trim it. So, whoops, you know, extra thread. It's going to look like this, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the rest of the stuffing in, but not enough so that it's going to um, be solid all the way up to the top. I'm going to leave this tiny little bit up at the top open so I can sew it to the body. Ah, <laughs> body of Blanca socks. Yeah, exactly, right? Actually, there are Blanca socks out there. It looks like he's uh, shocking guile or something. It's it's pretty neat to see. They're kind of cute. Okay. So, there's the first one. There's the second one. And third. Whoops. Okay. So, there you go. Whoops. Little leg. Now here's something else that I do. Um, 
I have like uh, hair bands. You could use rubber bands. And I put hot glue, a line of hot glue on here to help make sure that the, um, um, I keep wanting to call it ribbon, to make sure that the um, string doesn't snap or anything like that. And all I do is I just put a little line of it all across where you put your um, where you sewed your line of uh, string, right? And then I fold the foot upwards like this. And I put on the rubber, not the rubber bands, the hair bands, so that when it cools, it would have stayed like that, okay? If there's extra hot glue anywhere, you can just sort of pick it off as it's cooling. That way it's it's warm, it's still a little tacky. You can like work with it. But here's the thing, like I said, you're gonna be putting those little ankle bracelets on anyway, so it sort of covers any of that going on. Just make sure it's nice and has full contact and just let it cool like this. All right, so let's do this next one here. I don't have a knot on the end of this. We're going to win this. Okay, same thing. We are going to sew this ankle upwards onto the shin. So, just do it like this one. Just gonna lift it up. Whoops. And then just start sewing your little line across here. a little bit more of a pain to do. Uh, I couldn't do it on the sewing machine anyways, but, you know, it'd be nice if it worked, but uh, I'd have to do it by hand either way, so. Mm We are almost done with this little ankle. the needle. Okay. Alright. 
so here we go. Here's the other one. Now we're going to start using the stuffing. All right, so here you go. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with this one, see? Now that the glue has cooled, you got a little, a little tootsie. So, that's not bad. And we're gonna do the same thing. Put hot glue gun here. To sort of reinforce the stitching and to sort of give a little bit of a boost you know, to his foot, right? There we go. We're gonna curl it upwards, and we're gonna put on your rubber band, or if you have a, uh, a hair band or something, and just let it, let it cool. And then we're gonna start working on his fists. So it's going to look like this. All right. Now it's time for these little itty bitty arms. Mm. Well. Which I would I wish I would have had more material for his arms. Let's see how it looks when I actually get the uh, stuff in them. Real quick, just to see. See here. do this for now. If I don't like it later on, I might change it. Of course, then again, making his arms and legs look different might be better because, uh, the arms and legs on mine look exactly the same because it's the same thickness and everything. Mm, we'll see. All right, so.
All right. So I'm going to start sewing this fist. Um, same thing, take your uh, needle and thread. I'm going to have to put a knot. Whoops, on the end of this. So you're just going to curl the bottom of the sock inward and then you're just going to sew across like you did for the ankle except for this one. Instead of it making it look like a 90 degree angle, you're literally just going to be sewing it straight up against the opposite side, okay? Okay, so it's going to look like this, and what I'm going to do is same thing. I'm going to take, um, now that this is cooled, this other little foot, right? I'm going to take this and I'm just going to hot glue and make sure that this doesn't separate any. This one's a little easier because I don't have to really use this actually to hold it because the, uh, well, I will anyways. It should uh, be strong enough to hold on its own, but because you try to sew it closer so it should be snugger, stronger. All right. On the hands, he actually has his thumb come out and roll over so all I'm going to do is just take one of these little extra pieces here and we're just going to cut out sort of like a, a triangle that has rounded edges Okay, something like this. And we're going to make another one for his other hand. Usually when I'm doing this stuff, I'm on the floor and I am just throwing around material like crazy and I'm just, <laughs> and I'm really going to town. I'm trying to be like more contained for you guys. But, uh, yeah, I usually am pretty crazy with my stuff. Sort of like, I don't know if you guys ever saw 
the Batman where Catwoman's in it and, and it's Michelle Pfeiffer. It's I don't know which Batman it is. It's the one in the early nineties when she's making that Catwoman costume and she's just like throwing crap all over the place. That's <laughs> that's how I do this. And that's probably how I thought three hours for that was a long time and really now thinking back on it, it probably wasn't long at all. Because this is taking a little bit a little bit of time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue on this little thumb into his fist so that it's going to roll over. Let me see here. So if he's like that, it's got to roll over like this. Okay? Actually, you know what? I better make it better if it keeps not working. So all I'm going to do is just take my glue and put a real thin little line of hot glue in the uh, crest of where his fingers come through and then I'm just going to take his thumb and sort of rest it in there and just sort of gently fold it over. Now you got a little, a little Blanca fist, huh? Let's see if I can just put a little bit more glue in there. We are going to do this one. I'm going to change the channel. I don't know what this is. Alright. You guys got anything fun going on this uh, weekend? to Vancouver. There you go. College stuff. Learning how to make apple strudel muffins. Oh my god. That's pretty cool. I bet they'll be really good. 
Okay, so we have our next little arm here, and we're going to fold this in. This should be cool now. Let's see how it's doing. It's pretty good. All right, so that's how that's going to look, and I have to get more uh, thread for this. So let's get rid of that. Where's my thread? Gonna tie a knot in the end of this. One more. All right. Okay, so now same thing we're just going to sew this up uh to sort of make a little fist let's see here lot of people at final or final round at winter brawl asked me to sort of make these for them and I was like ah they're not that hard to make it just takes a lot of time you know I'm like I'm sure if I if I made this little video if anybody wants to know how to make them they can just watch the video and see but uh oops I never expected my arcade stick to break because I would have been uh, streaming, gaming, you know? So this is sort of crazy how this happened. <laughs> All right, so there we go. A little arm. With a little fist. And... Gonna tie a little knot on the end of this to make sure it doesn't come undone. Okay, and I'm gonna put some. Uh, actually, with this one, I'm probably gonna put the thumb in first if I can remember where I put the thumb. I know I had it. I had it somewhere. There it is. I've been sitting on it. Okay. So let's see here. If I have this one and this goes here, and this one is going to go here. Okay, so I'll do that. Okay, we're going to take some glue and put it on the inside here. Take some more and put it on the opposite side. And then we're going to take this, which I'm going to trim down a little bit. This little thumb. 
and we are just going to sort of place it in there. There we go. Good. And we're just going to let this cool and set. All right, so we have two little feet, two little hands. Put some more um, stuffing into the rest of these hands. Anybody try those new Taco Bell um, French fries that are like spicy? Anybody like them? My contacts are acting goofy. Oh, the TE2 with 450. I think I got mine um, at GameStop back in, uh, oh wow, I'm going to say maybe 2010 for about 150. Um, you know, that was when they were first, you know, starting to get mainstream, you know? I think the prices really started to go up after, after that, when people really started to buy more, you know, more arcade sticks. That's when it got real popular to, you know, take them to tournaments and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting there, folks. All right, so. Okay, we have a second little hand. tiny hand. All right, so let's see what we can do here. We're going to take this body and turn it inside out. Looking for the edge. And I didn't sew. Where is it? Right here. Okay. OK. 
Okay, so now we have the good side out. Okay. Not bad. Okay. I am going to stuff the top half of this. Actually, I'm probably going to stuff it as much as I can, but not... Let me see. Let me see. I, I'm trying to remember what I did last time. I think I ended up uh, filling it up about three-fourths of the way and then sewing on the arms and the legs and... Um, And seeing, because I didn't want it to be like, you know, like a real stuffed animal. I wanted it to sort of be pillowish and look like it's kind of squeezable, you know. Not like, you know how some things, when you have some things that are full of stuffing and it seems more, you know, rigid and kind of round. I wanted this to seem like, a, kind of like a bean bag. Kinda like a bean bag. <laughs> Frankenstein Blanca. Hi, hi, hi. We're getting there. It's a long process. This is taking a lot longer. <laughs> a lot longer than what I thought. I thought this was going to take like about one and a half, two hours. We're, I think right now we're working on three. I don't even, I don't think it took me three to make this one, but I was just saying earlier, usually when I work, I kind of work completely out of control and, and I'm trying to make this kind of more entertaining and stuff with talking, but I didn't even use my sewing machine with the last one. I could only use the sewing machine on half of this one because it got, um, the thread got all knotted up inside, so I have to fix it later, see what's going on, and actually take it apart, so. Let's see here. Okay, so we're getting there. Surprisingly, this stuffing costs some money. Like, that bag cost about $13, $15. I couldn't believe it. I was like, for a bag of stuffing? Are you serious? Really? It's kind of strange. You wouldn't think it would cost that much. getting there. <laughs> well, you know what, see, so here's the thing. I know that they're making those, um, those actual little keychains, the stuffed animal keychains. So, 
But I pretty much just made this video so other people, if they want to know how to make them, they can. Um, I wish I knew a way to make them, make this so that it's um, faster, you know, because it's taken a while. getting there. pretty good okay so here he is and what we're going to do is put on this his arms and then his legs right Let's see how that looks it's about right I guess huh Okay, so what I did with his arms was I actually left his arms up pretty high to his head and then I, I attached his arms about up here and then I attached his legs right here, okay? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to... Knot this thread up. And I'm going to have some for loco because I need it. We're going to take the stuffing on this and push it down a tiny little bit so that this part here at the top, there's no stuffing and it's flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this flat part here to a flat part that I'm going to pinch down here on the pillow, okay? And this is pretty thick, so I don't know if it's really gonna... Oh, it goes through. Okay, we're good. Now here's the thing, when you're sewing on these legs, you can be a little messy just because you're gonna be putting the pants over them anyways. So it's fine. After I get done sewing on this leg, I'm going to be um, hot gluing it on also because I want to make sure that it's really going to stick.
Okay, now I am actually going to take the other leg, do the same thing, push the stuffing down, make sure that I can sort of flatten this up on the top a little bit, and then I'm going to go over to this side and I'm going to sew them down. It's hard trying to sew through so much layers of material that's like thick, you know, it's sort of tough, tough to go through. Alright, whoop. So now I'm just going to go and kind of knot this up a little bit and then I am going to really hot glue this down, get another stick in this. Okay. Now just remember, uh, if you're hot gluing this, no one's going to see it anyways, like I said, because the pants are going to be going over his legs. So, you know, you can just really put a lot down and it's fine. Alright, so I'm going to let this cool and then I am going to put his arms on now, okay, while his legs are, while his legs are cooling down. <laughs> now here's the thing with his arms. You can be, um, you know, you can be a little bit uh, crazy when you're putting his arms on too because his hair is going to end up going around his shoulders anyways. So you don't have to worry about it looking too clean. Just make sure that it's adhered properly. He's only four. Yeah.
Okay. All right, got your needle, got your thread, thread knotted it up. I'm going to take the uh, first arm and we are going to make sure this is a little cooler down here. I don't want to start moving him around too much if he's still hot. All right, let's spray it. So here's the bottom of them. I guess I'm gonna put the first arm like here, maybe. Well, no. Let me do that one. Maybe here. I think that's pretty good, right there. So we're gonna do them here. Let me angle it more, huh? And then we're just going to start to sew them on. Like I said, with this, you don't have to worry so much because um, his hair is going to be covering his, uh, you know, his stitches. You're only concern is that it's going to be uh, sort of, you know, industrially done so it doesn't rip off, you know? Okay, this one is good. Whoop. I'm getting excited because now we're starting to get to the part that I like, which is sort of the embellishments, you know? Okay. Better knot this one fast. All right, so you can see, here's his arm. I'm actually gonna, in addition, glue it a little bit so it's gonna lay like this. And this extra material here, I'm going to trim off. Cheers. Okay. Yay. Blanca Chan. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, hot glue this down. And I'm going to hot glue it here on the back. And where any extra stitches are, just to make sure that they're good. And like I said, you can be sloppy with the hot glue. You can put a whole pile of it down simply because his hair is gonna be covering all of this. You're not gonna see any of it. Okay. I'm gonna let that cool for a minute just so when I put it down, it doesn't get all over the carpet and stuff. We're getting there. I should be okay. Okay. I put a little dab right here on his thumb. Okay. 
So here he is so far. Okay. We're going to take the other arm and put it maybe right here. That seems pretty good. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Let me tell you something. So now that we're talking about making stuff and everything else, one of the first costumes that I made uh, was a bazillion years ago for Halloween I made a She-Ra costume and what I did was I bought a girl's extra large like leotard type of thing and I tried to make it off of that and I thought to myself oh this is really cool but you know it was it was okay I mean I bet people thought it was neat but I for me it was alright you know um, but I was interested by it, and then a couple of years passed, and um, and they released uh, Super Street Fighter, and I saw the jury costume, and I thought, oh boy, that's pretty cool. I I, I bet I could make that. And the only thing that had really concerned me was her top. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do the spider and everything in the back. And suppose, surprisingly, the spider was not the problem in making that damn thing. The problem was trying to make the front look like it sort of curved right. It had to curve down and then it had to curve in. And the spider had to be snug enough in the back to withstand holding everything in together. And that took me a little while to try to figure out how to put it together. But that costume took a little bit of time um, to do. Put a knot in this real quick. Okay. Yeah, that took a little bit of time. But ironically, that's the one of the costumes people like the most. So I've been very fortunate with it. In that it hasn't fallen apart. <laughs> okay. So here's his other arm. We're going to take this uh, extra little piece here. We're going to trim it off. Mm. Yeah. Being difficult, huh? There we go. And then I'm going to take my hot glue gun out and I'm really going to just glue everything on down. So technically right now, this is what we're working with, okay? That's it. And when you look at this stuffed animal like this and you realize he's literally nothing but a pillow with string arms and string legs, anybody can make this. All the rest of this stuff is literally just super, uh, hot glued on. That's it. I mean, there's nothing, you know, nothing crazy about that. Okay. So, um, what's next?
Well, I did the arms and the legs. I think what I what the plan was hot glue, hot glue on everything. Okay, so I think what the plan was for me uh, initially was this. I was going to do um, to try to break this up for uh, for YouTube for me to put it on YouTube. I was going to have the first half of the stream be the body, then the second half of the stream be hair, eyes, mouth and slacks and the, his little bangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shut the stream down for like a minute. I'm going to turn it back on as if it's a new stream again and then get going for for the rest of all of this, okay? So I am going to be back in one second because I'm going to uh, pause this out, okay? All right, I will be right back. <laughs> 